All right, welcome back to Dream Talk. I'm your host, Brian Ladd. Uh, today's Tuesday, January 19th, 2009, 9.40 p.m. Um, we have two cases to discuss tonight and an update. Um, the cases are case number 841, Gabriel Scott Johnson, uh, case number 849, uh, Avian Lewis. We're going to be doing an update on case number 850, um, Vadim Johns, um, he has been located. We didn't really, we were going to do that case last night, but he's been located, so we skipped it. Uh, he has been located safe. Um, and then we have an update for Stacy Peterson, I guess Drew Peterson. Um, I have on the phone with me um, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Brian. How are you tonight? Um, good. Little computer issues here, but I'm trying to get them fixed. My son dumped some whatever in the keyboard, so I'm using this cheap membrane keyboard that I can type maybe two words a minute. And, and as you've seen in Skype, I'm misspelling everything. That's not my fault. Well, it's my finger's fault. I blame that. I was just going to say that I can vouch for your keyboard issues based on what I've seen in our Skype chat today. Yeah, so that, and I'm trying to do some major side updates here, so I'm just a little preoccupied. But um, You're a little handicapped tonight, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, al I'm already handicapped, but yeah, more than normal. I was just going to say, aren't you always a little handicapped? Yeah, more than normal. Um, the the picture well, I have up on the screen right now is for Gabriel um, Scott Johnson. We, we're gonna um, have Gail St. John on with us, who is a psychic. Um, I believe she's she can't take the phone just this minute, so we're gonna go to uh, case number eight forty nine first, correct? Or do you want to bring up some updates? Um, well, we were going to um, briefly cover Ian the Dean Johns, who was located. Okay. And we didn't cover last night, and then okay, let's do the okay. Let's do, the let's, do let's do the case um, last night. Case number eight fifty. It's Vadim Vadim Johns. Is that, is that correct? It's Ian. His first name is Ian. I A N. It's Ian Vadim Johns. Okay. Um, all right. I I don't have that entire first name on the case file, but I guess that's not important um, because he was located. Um, that case number is uh, case eight fifty. Um, dream drawings were done on the 17th of January, um, and he's been located, correct? Correct. Okay. He has been. Um, Ian the Dean Johns um, is a 14-year-old who went missing from Tempe, Arizona on January 13th. Okay. Um, spell his first name for me. He has been located me. safely. Can you spell his first name for me real quick? I-A-N. Okay, yeah. Ian. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have that on the case file at all. So I'm adding that. You did? No, I just had Vadim Johns. Well, guess what? You're fired. Good. See you later. Can I be fired too? You sure can. Okay. Well, Ian was last seen in the afternoon on the 13th of January as he was leaving school. And he did... Um, he does have health issues, re which require medication. So he got listed with National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and that's how I became aware of his case. And with the medication issues and such, thought it was important to open it. And as sometimes happens when someone's been missing for a period of time or even several days, when you work on a case, they're located. Yeah. This one, he had been missing too long, so I'll put that up. It might be just coincidence, but a lot of times the cases that we work, they've been missing for years. Um, and then, you know, we do a case, and, you know, remarkably, like a week later, they were located. Um, but, yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I really don't have a whole lot more to say, except he was located safe, which okay. is great. Um, located with his family. It's just, you know, once again... Boom, you start working on a case, you know, whether they've been missing for several days or they've been missing for a longer period of time. It seems to happen quite a bit. So yeah. whether, you know, you working on the case has anything to do with it or not, I'm just glad he's located. But I do notice a pattern there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was one, uh, two, three, four, four dream drawings. And um, looking at the dream drawings, they were done like he was already home. Because um, the, la the last one even says, it says, friend near Lakeshore Drive wants him to come home, come over and then skip school. Okay? So th this might be an event that it hasn't even happened yet. Do you want me to go over the, I mean, we got some time. I can go over the dream drawings real fast if you want. Sure, go ahead. It's always interesting to see what you got. Okay. 
Um, and, and like I said before, we weren't going to cover it, but we got time. We're waiting on Gail. Let's, we'll go ahead and do it. Um, the first one says, he's there, um, back home but still crying. Um, the number 37 was just walking away from trouble. Um, the next one says, Brick Church, the number 27, uh, 914, um, which is a time. 914, I guess, either a.m. or p.m., it doesn't specify. Uh, it says, they have him, something's wrong with father, and he's scared. Um, next one says, Warner. Uh, street home with pool, number 17, playing cards, and then the word bottled water, or bottle water. And the last one says, friend near Lake Shore Drive wants him to come over, and then skip school. And there's a drawing there of, I believe, Welcome. Of, of, don't have a clue. I can't even speculate on that one. But it's, it's, it's posted, so if anybody wants to look at it, it's there. The most important thing is that he's found, um, he might go missing again. I'll just say it like that. Um, and I don't think okay, it's a dangerous thing. that it could happen again based yeah. on your work. Just no, just well, yeah. Looking at the last dream drawing, it seems like he's being pressured to, to, to go do something again. 